of course, you can also take that the other direction and say, well, this is what where you're looking at pensions being given out. This is a period when most regiments write their regimental histories, when people publish yeah. memoirs, and it's like, how much can we trust these when we talk about the war? Because mm -hmm. it's like, hey, it's thirty years in the few in the past what took place. Right. Memory isn't great. So is what is in these histories that are written around yeah. 1900 actually reliable and, and i would i think no i mean leslie gordon has written on this and her wonderful book about union veterans right mm -hmm. and and she's talked about uh, the broken regiment right that uh, it's connecticut unit if i remember correctly it's 16th yeah. um and it's a great book and she's a great section in there that i i cite because i think she's right about how unit histories are really made to sort of celebrate the unit mm -hmm. and that's true for union units yeah. It's even more true for Confederate units who have this added issue that they have to explain why the Confederacy lost and make it clear that the reason the Confederacy lost was because the Confederacy, um, despite their good actions, right? The yeah. only reason the Confederacy lost was all the other units sucked. My unit was great. And so there's this great quote in uh, one of the unit histories where this guy says, you know, we were perfect at following our officer's orders. Right. And mm -hmm. it's very easy when you see a quote like that, where it's just so blatantly obvious that this is not going to be true to just go and look at the OR or go and look at um, the CSR for the commanding officer of that unit. And you find a letter in there where he's like, my men keep ignoring me. Right. And so it's almost as if and this is where methodologically, I think it is as an analytical tool. The lady doth protest too much. Right. Is mm -hmm. that when when you read something where it sounds like man, that's really impressive. That unit must have been amazing. That's when you're like, to me, I need to go, oh. Something wrong. There's something wrong here. They're covering over something because the mm -hmm. lies aren't accident. They're not just to honor themselves. They're to cover something over. And so, yeah, I think unit histories are one of the worst sources to try to get at the war, not just because it's 30 years after, but because they are created at a time when people are trying to get pensions and when they want to be celebrated and when they're trying to celebrate the lost cause and so they're trying to explain defeat away. And so everyone, it's everyone else's fault. This is why my unit was the best. And, and you really see that when you look at units like Leslie Gordon does with a unit that like has a less than illustrious military record. And the same thing happens with the North Carolina Cavalry unit that I look at in the book um, that has, they, they even defend themselves. There are many duties besides being on the battlefield because this unit is basically in, on, uh, on picket duty for most of the war, right? They're like out in North Carolina on picket duty and they don't really see a lot of action. And they're like, but we were still really great, right? Um, and there's there's this clear sort of sense of like insecurity almost, you could say, right? Of where they're sort of trying to deal with it. And so I really look, when I'm trying to find, when I look at like a unit history, I look for the parts of the unit history where um, it's almost like that's, man, that's really impressive. The moment I see that's really impressive, I think to myself, that's worth double checking. Um, and so anything that, it, you know, I always am, am, am suspicious of, of what the purpose of these documents is. So I am of the belief, and this is something that not all military historians agree on, um, or not all Civil War historians agree on, that unit histories are fascinating for memory, but are very difficult to use to talk about the actual war. And here's the thing, those unit histories, they were used by previous generations to make the master narrative. When you think about Bruce Catton um, and, and folks of his generation, Right. Um, and then Bruce, I use Bruce Catton because he's the first Civil War historian I read. Right. I, I grew up on Bruce Catton. Um, but you could include other people. Um, I mean, I don't know if I want to call him a historian, but Shelby Foote. Um, right. He used them. Um, and, and his narrative, though, is a dominant one and the first one that a lot of us get. I mean, um, and any any number of others have used and continue to use and people still continue to use these histories sort of uncritically because they're available. Mm -hmm. um, but they are a really good way of finding um, about memory. I mean, and I think that's, um, and, and they're, they're serving a purpose. And I think that purpose is not to preserve history. Um, it's, it's frequently has other, other aspects. I'm a cynic professionally is one way of looking at it. I'm extremely cynical in how I approach the past. Um, I'm an optimist personally, don't worry. But uh, but but in my professional life, I am a cynic.